Hey everybody, welcome back to more Duke Nukem Attrition. I am still Negrop. I still have Deceitful Penguin here with me. Well, I try sometimes when I lie in bed to commentate no. on LPs. I'm not doing fucking four non blonde ever. <laughs> fucking nerd. That nothing will come key at for that non blondes ever. Uh, yes. No. Anyway. What? No. Not, not in the realm of flash animation. We, we already... I'm pretty sure we've discussed gay rights in other videos. We don't need to discuss He-Man's rights. Because then we're going to get into this whole discussion about other cartoon rights and how they're being neglected by their Holy Korean fuck. overlords. Fire everywhere. Yeah, what? the, uh, Clicks? the random... Clicks the animated uh, series? Because he's a Korean overlords. Oh, well, that's every animation. Oh. But yeah, um, the the randomization sometimes will be a bit tricky, and sometimes you'll get, you know, the enforcers that shoot out flaming balls or enforcers that spam out their deadly tear gas. What lovely view we have of our little blue planet. Yeah, I mean, the, as we travel more and more through Lunar Apocalypse, I, I have to wonder if, if this is all just one giant space station or what. Because this thing would have to be pretty fucking massive for where we've gone through so far. Well, I haven't seen the moon anywhere. Maybe they made it into a space station. No, no, the moon is off to the right. Oh. Well, the right now. It's, I, I'm not really good with describing uh, Three -dimensional. third dimensions. Uh, east. It's at two o'clock. Uh, it's up, down, and east, west, north. I I'd be awful in the sub. See, I well, you can kind of see it. Well, it's just like all I learned about maneuvering in three D. I learned from Morrison's good car. So. Uh, yes. The enemy gate is down. I I've never I've never I don't read fantasy. Uh, he's both science fiction, but I'll let that slide. He is a uh, fantasy fiction with science. God, I love it when uh, you find out those guys are flat. Yeah, it's uh, it's not normal that most of the time you're actually giving given a vantage point to see the different wonderful aspects of the, the character models themselves. But it makes me so much nostalgia. You, that was fun. Uh, for. Flat textures? Yes, you know, kids these days always complaining about that graphics, and I would say to them, once every enemy was a card out, cardboard cutout. You didn't see us complaining? No. Yeah, long, long ago, all enemies were just words. You'd be in a dark room, and somebody would be there in the cave with you, and you'd wonder how you went from a cave into a room, and then you would be eaten by the. Group. Gorlax. I don't know, what was that thing from Zork that was in the dark? Group. Group. It is dark. You are likely to be eaten by a group. Very topical. It is. Because, you know, as uh, the father of all, you know, semi fantasy games, it clearly influenced this game through its usage of torches. Actually, I, I watched a, a rather awkward documentary on text-based adventures called uh, Get Lamp. And if if you ever want to see a documentary of 35-year-old virgins discussing their favorite text-based adventure, then this was the documentary for you. But it, it was interesting to learn that I guess one of one of the very first. Uh, text-based adventures was interestingly enough called Ad adventure mm -hmm. and the the guy basically got the idea while he was going around spelunking through some nearby caves yeah. and he... it's actually based on an existing cave system right yeah yeah like he he would walk around the cave with a notebook and scribe out you know the the interior of the the cave itself and he made that into a game I can tell you that I've done some spelunking, but it's a lot more nerve-wracking in a geologically active area. 
Yeah, yeah. Like you said, I think you've said in Iceland is volcanically active. It is uh, one of the most volcanically active areas in the world. Yeah, uh, well, I'm sure British people may remember the the airplane outages, I suppose, due to David Lewis. That, yeah, that volcano mm -hmm. uh, exploding or going off. It's a volcano underneath a glacier. Or like uh, that Ukrainian game about an ice ship breaker in the North Pole, not me, the South Pole. Glacier. What do you. You're not talking about Cryostasis. Yes, Cryostasis. Right? Ah. Glacier. I, I did not expect the ending to that game. And I, I don't want to I don't want to spoil it for anybody, but it it was fairly unexpected to say. It that. was. I expected a lot of things from the ending, but that certainly was one of them. Yeah. What did you I just mean, kill? I, uh, those were two battle lords, which was actually very odd. Like, <laughs> I, I was aiming at the blue one, but the rockets were seeking onto the other one. So I was like, he's not taking any damage. And suddenly I started to realize, like, I could see the the rockets arcing the other direction, I was just like, well, fuck. Also, that, that little button off to the side is actually the secret exit for the secret level, but either button that you press in, in this particular attrition mod will just take you to the next level, not actually take you to the secret level. Also, the, the, sliding, the sliding pipe bomb actually worked to my advantage, finally. But actually, that is the end of this particular level. It was very exciting, wasn't it? It was. It was apparently the hardest level in this chapter? Uh, sure. We'll go with that. But we'll see you next time for more Duke Attrition. Yep, yeah, bye-bye.